Welcome back, Mongo Fix. Well, today, Mongo working on a dehumidifier. Story with this one is that it's just not making water like it used to. Open up this here bucket and take a look. Oh, there's some sort of uh, bluish greenish stuff on there. Got some mold growth, some bacteria growth. Pretty common for dehumidifiers, you know, because the water sits in a bucket. This little blue green, a little concerning though. That make Mongo think the Freon was leaking out. The big downside to troubleshooting dehumidifiers is that you can't see anything inside of them. The only part that slides out is the bucket. And sure, okay, you can take the bucket out, dump it out, cool. There's always a filter. This one, you pull down this little screen, and it's just a little screen filter inside there. This one in good shape, so it's getting changed regularly. Oh, we can see some of that uh, blue over here, that blue-green color. Most people forget to change the filter. You gotta be sure to change your filter, because if not, it'll get clogged, and the fan inside there won't be able to pull as much air through the heat exchanger to actually condense the moisture of the air onto the heat exchanger, which then drips the moisture into the bucket. To help troubleshoot, Mongo likes to take the dehumidifier apart, or at least this outside casing, so you can see the heat exchangers, you can see the fan, see the condenser, and actually try to troubleshoot it. Most of these have a whole bunch of screws in the back. Now each model's a little bit different. So you might not have screws in the exact same location. So for this model, there's one here, and there's one on the opposite side. And there's a couple, of, one in there, one in there. Need a long screwdriver for these. There's one way down at the bottom here. Then there's one on the side. Normally there's a little tiny cover there. that covers that one up. This one's got a little cover on it, and those can sometimes be a pain in the butt to get out. Now yeah, let's see if this little paper clip can pry that out. There we go. Usually in the front, right there on each side. We'll see if that was enough to separate this guy. Just carefully, a little bit at a time, work her off. This little pamphlet has all of the assembly instructions, test instructions, and electrical diagrams. This is for the personnel who are going to service this machine. Just real lightly try to get this front face off. The top face plates connected with the electricals up there, so you won't be able to go too far. But, a lot of times, just enough to wiggle it around. So you can take a look at this front heat exchanger. And it all sorts of rusty up here. Oh, we got some melted foam up here. Oh, a lot of melted foam. The foam's not supposed to melt. That's usually signs of overheating. Well, we'll plug her in, see what happens. Let's see, power on. Well, the fan kicks on, that's always a good sign. All right, now the air compressor kicked on. Now we should start seeing this front element starting to frost up as long as there's a lot of Freon in there. Well, these coils are not really getting cold at all. This line is getting cold. You can see down here we got a bunch of ice forming. This machine's been running about 15 minutes now and that is the only section that's gotten cold. Uh, it looked like about 26 degrees, I don't know, 12, 19 degrees. A little below ambient temperature. That's not enough cold to actually condense any of the moisture in the air. This whole heat exchanger should be frosty. Not icy, frosty. And then as that collects, the water will drip down it. The warm water from the air will collect on it, drip down, and remove the frost. This is a little sensor right here. That detects ice buildup. The problem with most dehumidifiers is that the location of this sensor is usually the dumbest spot imaginable. This is your ice sensor. It's basically a thermistor. The problem is with it being up here, way out on the edge, it's probably one of the last locations to actually ice, especially when it starts getting cold down here. It's always best for this sensor to be as close to the start of the buildup of ice as possible. So that way it'll detect ice at the beginning 
not way up at the end of the ice buildup. This is a little steel plate. These are copper tubes and you have aluminum fins. When you get ice buildup, it will cause the steel to rust. The ice will also expand. Water is one of those few things that, you know, a certain volume of water, once it turns to ice, that volume expands. So when you have ice buildup down here, or anywhere on this condenser, and it expands, it will separate these joints, causing Freon to leak out. As it's compressed and pushed through orifice tubes or expansion valves, depending on the type of style machine it is, it will cause a decrease in temperature, and that's how you get the cold temperature on these machines. Dehumidifiers, AC units, and refrigerators, they all work the exact same way. They have a system of Freon inside that goes through a heat exchanger, some sort of orifice tube or expansion valve, depending on style. That causes the heat exchanger to get cold. Air is either pulled through, pushed through, whatever. That makes cold air either into your refrigerator or whatnot, or in this situation, it makes cold air here. The heat exchanger on the back cools the Freon, after it goes through all this stuff, the Freon gets really hot and so that cools it. So therefore your output air is about ambient, but it collects all the moisture up here to remove it from the air. Once you get that ice buildup, it separates the joints, Freon leaks out. Once the Freon leaks out, it can't get back in, you shut the machine off, all that ice will melt down and away. And then these leaks will seal back up. Just because that ice pushed them apart, the ice goes away and they seal back up. So there is a little bit of Freon in this machine, not enough to make it effective. The other downside of losing all your Freon is in the back of the machine. In the back of the machine is the air compressor. It's called a sealed unit because inside here is a normal electric motor along with a Freon pump. So the electric motor is sealed in here, that way you can have a sealed Freon system. And then the pump will actually compress, that's why it's called a compressor, it will compress the Freon and force it through these little tubes. So one of these tubes is an outlet from here into the heat exchanger, the other is the return or inlet back into the compressor so it can keep cycling the same. Most times the Freon's dangerous to plants, animals, and the environment. That compressor's running over 200 degrees right now. 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. You know, you, you burn yourself if you touch it for more than just a half fraction of a second. This is how you hear about the stories of, you know, houses burning down and whatnot because of the dehumidifier. It's because that compressor will get so hot that it will start burning we have melted foam so it'll start melting that foam at some point it'll get to an ignition point and that'll catch all the plastics all the wires all the foam everything else on fire and if it's in your basement could catch your house on fire usually that device starts overheating because there's no freon left in the device the machine is nothing more than a machine it's not that smart like every other machine man has ever made it has sensors on it like we saw, the one ice sensor. There's a humidity sensor. That's the humidity sensor right there that reads how much moisture is in the air. Those aren't the most reliable sensors. And then the machine has inputs from the user, right? High humidity, low humidity, cycle to time, or just constantly on. So the machine's just trying to do what the sensors are telling it to do. So right now the machine is saying, well, it says uh, we want very low humidity, so kick it on full blast all the way. So right now the compressor is merely just trying to compress Freon that isn't there to get moisture out of here, and it's not going to shut off until this device senses ice. In Mongo's opinion, that device is in the worst location it could possibly be. We have 28, 19 degrees. That is ice. That machine should be shutting off because it has ice buildup right now. But the machine's not sensing that because of the location of the sensor. Now, if there was more Freon in the machine, a lot of times Mongo will reroute this sensor to the cold location. Usually attach it with uh, 
like some steel wire or something and just wire it up right there. That way, the sensor is right where it would get coldest first. You can kind of see the moisture that did collect just dripping down and adding up to that ice block. And that ice block will just keep growing. Pongo got that sensor jammed up in the ice real good and the air compressor kicked off. Sure enough, that ice melting pretty quick. But again, shouldn't have that ice build up to begin with. Seems now we have a proper cycling machine. Mongo get the little thermistor thing just jammed into this little black rubber thing. It icing up first there, which will cause that to ice up. And the machine cycles now without creating an ice dam. And the problem is it's supposed to do that on this whole heat exchanger coil thing. So kind of seeing as how that frost buildup stopped there, didn't really continue. Once the copper tube turns that temperature, it'll slowly radiate or transfer along that copper tube to about there and then call it quits before the ice builds back up. Unfortunately, once the machine is out of Freon, there's not much you can do for it. There's a little port sticking up here and you can see it's kind of got a little crimp thing on it. That's the factory fill port or test port. In the back here there's another one. That is another factory fill slash test port used at the manufacturer. Not really serviceable. For one you need a special appliance refrigerant to put inside there and then you would have to cut this off or unsolder it and then add a fill port there and then add a test port there to make sure you get the right amount of refrigerant inside the device and that refrigerant to buy is not super cheap usually it's just cheaper to get a new machine even though these machines nowadays a couple hundred bucks so they are not super great to just keep buying every few years but at least that's how they work. Well, hopefully this video helped you if you ever had a dehumidifier that's not quite working or something. If there was enough Freon in here, you might be able to save it, but this one not so much. Well, if you like this video, be sure to like this video. If you like this video and other videos from Mongo Fix, be sure to subscribe. Mongo is working on all sorts of stuff. Mongo, thank you.